All right, cool. So hello everyone, welcome. It's great to have you. My name is Thomas Hernandez. And I'm Luisa Suarez. <laughs> and today we'll be discussing endless opportunities, media, politics, and how to thrive in college. So here's just a quick overview about what we're going to be discussing today. We're going to be talking about pre, our pre-college experiences and background. We're going to be discussing Klein College and coursework, Temple University opportunities, internships, scholarships, professor-student relationships, post-graduation and recommendations, self-care, which is very important during this COVID-19 time. And we're just going to have some closing notes. All right, everybody, as I said before, I'm Luisa Suarez. I am a junior slash senior. So it's kind of like this really weird area where I have enough credits to be a senior, but because of my course load, I will still be graduating in approximately a year. I am a journalism and political science major. I'm a member of P Sigma Alpha, which is essentially the National Political Science Honor Society. I was actually born in Medellin, Colombia. And then I came to the United States when I was like around six years old. And I was uh, partly raised in Berks County, writing PA if anybody's ever heard of it. And now I live full time in Philadelphia because I go to Temple University and I'm having a lot of fun in the city. I'm really happy that I'm here. And I, different things, I, I love writing. I have been actually writing since high school. I'm a budding videographer because, you know, I don't want to fully take the title of a videographer, but I do have some fun creating packages. And a traveler, I love visiting Colombia and I hope to, of course, travel all over the world. And I'm a researcher as well. I think when you do a lot of political science, you always have a little bit of research on the side whenever you do. So that's me. I have a picture of my baby, my dog, Canelo, right there. My beautiful, she's 11 months. She's going to be a year and next month, she's a Taurus. And those are just some pictures of me doing my thing in journalism and some projects that I've worked with. And that's me and Tommy at a student leadership luncheon. So that's a little bit about me. And then here is myself. So again, my name is Thomas Fernandez, or to the least people know me, Tommy. I am also in Luis's situation that in between between junior year and senior year, as we make that transition into our pretty much our last year, last year at Temple. I am a communication studies and political science double major. I'm going for distinction in both the majors. I'm also a university honors student, currently with a 4.0 GPA, trying to keep that going for graduation. We'll see how it goes. I was born in Philly. I was raised between the city and the Lehigh Valley. I actually went to a performing arts high school in the Lehigh Valley. And I'll, I'll discuss that more when I talk about my photos. And I should also mention that I am a researcher, hip hop dancer, actor, because I did go to this, I did go to that theater, I did go to that art school for theater, martial artist, and a traveler. So I want to discuss these photos real quick because I think it's it really does give a lot of emphasis and it gives a lot of background into who I am as a person, especially leading up to college. That top left photo is a picture of me with my dance crew from way back in the day. That is, that is S Boogie on, right next to me. Then that's Trizzy, then that's Gate. And if anybody knows Gate, actually if anybody knows any of them, they're the best dancers in the city of Philadelphia. They taught me so much, whether, you know, going to different dance battles around the tri-state area, going to different, sessions, different ciphers, like the event we had at the Rotunda, if anybody knows, near closer to UPenn. It was a big event that happened. I was lucky to be there. This was about my senior year of high school. And it was just, it was all love. It really just showed me a lot growing up because it really, it kept, oh, dance always kept me in touch with my Philadelphia roots. And it just kept me in touch with humanity and life, being around people and seeing the love that can come from such a simple thing as dance. In addition to that, I have done research in Puerto Rico. If you look at the picture below, that's me, that's myself and my uncles and my brother as we are working. We're, again, they're at Puerto Rico. I did a lot of research. I spent time there. My research mainly focused on dance as a means of protest, but also had a chance to try my, try my time as a budding vid videographer as well. Although Luisa probably has a lot more experience with it. Um, and to the bottom right, there's also a photo of a dance night. I did bring some of my dance skills out to Puerto Rico. I'm not trying to brag, but I do a little salsa, a little bachata. I do my thing from time to time. 
Then in the top right, there's a photo of me working with a recent internship. Before COVID happened, I was able to sit down with some members of the Philadelphia community with City Commissioner, uh, Philadelphia City Commissioner Omar Sabir, great person, great group working there with the city, helping out with figuring out elections. In this case, we were talking to representatives of the homeless population in Philadelphia. And then finally, just to bring it full circle to who I am as a person, that bottom left corner is my parents getting married at City Hall because that's, that's real reflective of my, of my my life experience just growing up, being biracial, just being really between everything. I've never been one fully something, I'll say. I've always been a mix of everything. To the left of my dad is my Aunt Sharifa, who actually graduated from Spelman. She does nursing stuff currently in the city with LGBTQ students, LGBTQ youth and an adult. So I get to speak with her often about college and whatnot. Then I have my dad, of course, my mom, then my little brother, well, my brother at the time, he's he's huge now. And then that's my aunt Erica, who actually works for PGW again. My family, it's really Philadelphia. It's really a mix of everything. And I love them and I love the experience that I've had growing up. I honestly, it's 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 a blessing being from Philadelphia. And it's a blessing just being at Temple now. So yeah. So what is journalism? It's a huge question. It's kind of a little bit hard to answer. On the left, I have some pictures of AP News, New York Times, um, WSJ, like, you know, huge publications, legacy publication. So the definition of journalism is the activity, activity of gathering assets and creating and presenting news and information. It's auto, also the product of all these activities. It's very, very diverse, right? You have print, you have radio, broadcast, which is like, you know, if you do turn on the TV, you know, you have... Uh, 60, I, you have Telemundo, you have Univision, all these kind of things. You have broadcast, multimedia is what I like to do personally. Multimedia is, let's say you're watching Vice Box on YouTube, that is a multimedia production. Then you have sports coverage, uh, you have entertainment, which is like, I think of like, you know, when they're sitting on a panel and stuff like that. And then political coverage, which is my thing as well, which is why I double major in political science, because as a journalist, I want to be as informed as possible in like, you know, the political arena and double majoring has really given me the ability to like understand both topics and understand how they intersect. So you're gonna probably hear that what Tommy researches and what I research are kind of very vastly different, but we intersect in like our interests within politics. So as a journalist, we also focus a lot on ethics, transparency and equity. And the reason we do is because Journalists, we're part of a community and we're covering the community. And as journalists, we really have a responsibility to do that correctly, to make sure that we're representing our community members in a light that they feel comfortable with. And especially in a city as diverse and as big as Philadelphia, when we're talking about, let's say, any of the violence that's happening, the sporting events, like, you know, when you're talking about the attitude of Philadelphia as a journalist, you want to make sure that you're doing that accurately. Um, we kind of get this title of, watchdogs because we're supposed to be you know non-biased we are supposed to be out there and we're telling the truth and I think before when people think of journalists you think a lot of like print like of your regular newspaper but now with all of this new technology it's many many more things I had the opportunity to go to New Hampshire like the primaries about a year ago which is crazy that to think that that was already a year ago but when I was over there I always had a camera in hand I was partnering and I was just talking to people on camera and you know like and it was just so much fun but I don't think it's necessarily what people think of like when you think of traditional journalism so just out there if you're into video work there's or radio just talking podcasting is also a form of journalism very new very modern so that's a little bit about journalism and you know advocating for the multimedia thing myself so all right and then i'm just going to talk about communications and in this case communication studies to the left i actually have a few images and i'll explain them the first is Somebody Gotta Do It, which is actually a brand that stemmed out of a communication studies major. Uh, his name is Yusuf, and the work he has done is phenomenal, not only for the Philadelphia community, but just for people as a whole. His brand is great. You can find him online. You can also find his personal information online. I just wanted to express that. And there's so many more entrepreneurs that came out of communication studies. 
it's it's really big. It's really big. What everything has been done in communication studies, and I figured that would be the most appropriate thing to express right off the bat is anything's possible in communication studies. You can launch your own brand, or you can be like our director of the program, Dr. Gratz, who has two PhDs, teaches, directs our program, and is currently a student at the University of Oxford. There's so many possibilities. There's also the potential to work in the United Nations, as you know, and, and that not only, step, not, not only applies to communication studies majors, but honestly just to client as a whole. While communication studies at the college, at our client college level, does encompass advertising, public relations, communication and social influence, journalism, media studies and production, it's really about bringing in everything full circle from the education sphere. In the case of Luis and I, it's political science that we really like to bring along with our media and communication background. And again, that's just why I put the United Nations in there as well. Just to go over the a brief definition of communication studies and the program, the communication studies program in the Klein College School incorporates theory and practice, exposing you to fields throughout the school and allowing you to choose an area of expertise from entrepreneurship and social movements to technology and advocacy. In the program, again, we cover, we try to allow students to take all classes from all over the school as a really big part of the major. And within that, there's four different tracks that students can explore in addition to a distinction track, which is what I'm currently doing. And that allows a student to explore research a little more in depth. In this case, research is much more broad as a whole. Research isn't just writing a paper. It's, it's not just that. Research could be a student film project. It could be a photography book. It could be writing a book. It could be simply you recording a dance video of some sort. But tying it back to communication studies. What does it represent? What does it add to this, to this culture or to this, this practice of communication studies? That's what that distinction track is about. As you'll come to realize, communication is in everything, which is why this major is so broad. And again, I, just, I feel like it is important to reiterate that communication studies does encompass a little bit of everything and it does allow you to expand, but so do all the majors at Klein. You'll never, you will truly never find one person who's strict in what they focus on. I believe anybody who's at Klein, they're typically bringing in some sort of focus. If they're media studies and production, sometimes you'll have somebody coming in with a sports background, a fashion background, whatever it may be. That applies to all majors. In the case of communication studies, again, very broad, allows you to really diversify yourself. It's all about that. And it allows you to really bring in your unique background into the work you do. So political science, as I said, this is where me and Tommy kind of intersect in a very interesting way. So the definition, it's a systematic study of governance by the application of scientific methods of analysis, which sounds really complicated. It does, but it's traditionally defined and studied political science examines the state and its organs and institutions. So politics, whether you know we like it or not, is kind of all around us, right? In many different forms, right? It can be like the politics of your school, the politics of your local government. You have the state, you have federal government, and you're also not limited just to the United States. If you want to study and focus on other global regions that's so open and you can essentially Klein and College of Liberal Arts really gives you these tools to broaden your scope you're never ever as Tommy said ever limited to studying one thing but if you do have an interest specifically in a region they have classes specifically for that you do research law international relations and history you can run for office you do political campaigns and just as Tommy said as journalists if you don't necessarily become a journalist you do have a lot of these tools that intersect with communications and skills and you can work for political campaigns and do marketing and such and political coverage so it's very very broad and you can take a lot of the skills that you learn here in this field and apply them to many others you can go into finances you can go into business it's just really about applying reading analyzing and it's just what i love about political science it kind of helps you understand why things work the way they do around you, right? Like, why do you have to pay this tax here, but you don't have to pay this tax in another city, right? Like, why do we have the sugar tax maybe in Philadelphia, but not in Reading, even though we're in the same state? It's very interesting. If you're into education, 
you know, you can learn about a little bit about policies around education. But if you're not super into the, you know, just the raw research of it, you can kind of do what I do, which is I like covering politics and making it a little more digestible for people to access it and to understand it. I do a lot of bilingual coverage because I think it's very important for my community to also understand what's going on. And, you know, sometimes you do have language barriers and client gives you a lot of tools to be able, you know, we run Latinx Media Association to be able to learn how to do community outreach and talk to people. So that's my view of political science personally. Yeah, and I, I just want to express one point in particular. Luisa said that, you know, political science, it really does allow you to do, not, it, it's, it's very similar to our majors. It, allow, it really does allow you to do anything because politics isn't everything. You see it in music. You see it in, again, I study dance with it. You see it in dance. You see it in fashion. You see it in all these different fields. It allows you to do all these different things when you take up this major or when you just take up this field of study on your free time. I know personally, I had an advertising teacher who had a background in political science. Like he planned on going to law school at first and then went into advertising. That's the different things that can happen within this major. Just to highlight, Luisa, would you be able to uh, tell the audience about your particular areas of interest? I know you spoke about them a little bit, but specific research or specific fields that you're interested in in terms of political science and communications? Yeah, so I'm definitely very interested in like Latin America, but I do actually do a lot of my coverage very locally. So I'm very interested in covering Philadelphia politics and very much community based um, coverage as well as just uh, federal government, state government. I mentioned it earlier, but when I went to New Hampshire, it was me being in a completely new state, um, but I was covering a election, right, a presidential election. And it was very interesting to see how the candidates spoke to people when you have um, New Hampshire is a very much more intimate area. So you get to kind of be in this room and you're looking like, you know, you're looking at Bill Weld, you're looking at like uh, Joe Biden, all of these different candidates right in front of you. So I do like um, more U.S. based politics. But even within that, there are different branches, right? Like I know Tommy kind of likes security and stuff like that. Well, I'll focus more on. I think culture, community, and then, you know, policy, I think is another thing that I personally like a lot. Like, why do we have these laws? Why do they work the way they do? And when we think about policy, it really affects us personally. So that's my area of interest within research and how kind of it like collides with my journalism experience. Yeah, and again, this political science and, and media and communications, these fields, they really can take you anywhere. Luisa kind of mentioned it, my, my interests are in international security. I'm very much inter interested in resolving conflicts around the world, whether it be related to like civil wars or disputes between countries. I've, I've studied a lot of geography, studied a lot of history in terms of international relations. My coursework is reflective of that, but so is also my outside studies and readings and also the movies and TV shows I like to watch, especially documentaries. I'm personally interested in going into law school upon graduation, but I will speak about that further. I will speak about that later on in the presentation. Yeah. So Klein College offers a lot of things. You know, we touched on it briefly. You have advertising, communications, and social influence, communications, journalism, MSP, and public relations. But the really, really interesting thing about it is we have a very broad scope of student news. You have TUTV, which is broadcast. You have uh, La Charla, which is kind of, you know, it's a Spanish uh, based like kind of talk show. We talk about media, we talk about what's in the news, pop culture, all sports update is huge and award winning production and just talking sports about, you know, the temple teams. And then you have Temple Talk, which is another talk show, but you are never limited just, you know, within these shows. If you want to start your own show and pitch your idea, you 100% can. I know me and Tommy at the beginning, we actually uh, both anchored Update Ahora, which was brand new experience for us, we, you know, kind of wanted to just go in the studio, we were freshmen, and we were like, you know, like, we're just going to try this, you know, practice our language and be in front of the camera, read off a teleprompter. And it's funny, because, you know, Tommy's communications, and I was journalism, but I was just, I actually came in MSP, but like learning my way around. And they really, the student news productions give you a lot of wiggle room. I have another friend that's communications and social influence, 
but she's a huge producer in the television studio. So you, these are like extracurriculars and you're never ever limited as to what you want to explore. And I actually really advocate for going into different shows or, you know, different writing rooms. The Temple News is an amazing publication, award-winning. They have a lot of different sections. You have Refine Magazine, another one, great coverage. And you have so much diversity and what you can cover, you can pitch your ideas. And there's also a great sense of community and of learning. You're always going to have mentors. You're never, you know, just going to be thrown into the water and like, you just kind of have to figure it out. There is a lot of great tips um, that they can give you. And we have organizations, over 20 student organizations, you know, pitch Latinx Media Association, which is what me and Tommy run, then the Temple Association of Black Journalists, and then Lambo Pi Eta. And you really have, and once again, if you don't see that you, what you want is available, you can always start your own organization. And Klein gives you a lot of support as a university. They really do. When we started Latinx Media Association, me and Tommy, we were like freshmen kind of going on to sophomores. And we had, you know, our mentor, Rafael, who ran the organization, but we really got so much support from our advisor, from the career office, from everybody in the school that's like, hey, like we really want to support your mission and we're gonna give you some resources to do that. So don't ever feel limited with what's here, but you can really, really do a lot of amazing things. And of course, if you have your own independent work, you can also do that as well. So Klein College, I'm a huge, huge fan of where I, go. not just because I go to school there, obviously, but because of my trip to New Hampshire personally was actually a class technically offered through Klein. And we have our Klein Go office that also does other things where you can do internships abroad and so many opportunities and you are never limited with what you want to do. Yeah, and I'll just, before I move to the next slide, I'll just add real quick. Don't, yeah, don't doubt yourself before testing the waters. For my, yeah. for my freshman year, again, Luis and I, we barely knew each other. And still I, I went along with Luis and said, all right, I'll do this temple update on, I think, why not? I, I knew Spanish relatively, not as strong as everybody else who was there. So I went in barely, really being uncomfortable speaking it. And you can check my clips on YouTube. I got through the semester and I felt good about myself afterwards. And I'm sure Louisa can say the same. Even though that wasn't what we kept on doing, we took that experience with us and we moved forward because it, it was a good time. I'm not gonna lie. It was, it was a very fun time. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna move to the next slide now. Okay, so I'm just going to pretty much take what Louisa said and just talk more about on campus opportunities, campus life, and just staff and faculty as it relates to Temple University and more. So, on campus opportunities, there are so many student organizations. Lisa just touched upon what's at Klein College. At Temple University as a whole, I believe there are 400 plus organizations, and they can all be found through OutConnect as well as through Instagram. I've gone down a rabbit hole of organizations simply seeing organizations shouting out each other. I mean, from a pre, from pre-law society shouting out Latinx societies, it's, it's really just a rabbit hole of organizations interacting with each other. And you can get involved by reaching out to them through their social medias or through the different events that happen at Temple from, you know, like all of these first, first year weeks and whatnot to just simply events that you can find on calendars of events and whatnot general involvement there's so many opportunities offered not only through these organizations but also through the temple university community itself i've worked with the office of leadership development i've worked i currently work with the office of communication studies program and i have participated at open house experience temple days on behalf of Klein college it's also important to note that in those experiences with general involvement i've also had the chance to do research on behalf of the college and by on behalf, I mean, they funded me to do research. That's just a little bit about general involvement. There's so many opportunities, not just in Klein College, but at Temple University as a whole. And that expands to Temple University of Japan as well. There are so many opportunities there. Same with Temple University of Rome. Again, you can take advantage of all of them. The, the world is your oyster. I don't want to say that, but it seems appropriate in this case. The world is your oyster. You have to take advantage of it. I want to also highlight some campus life stuff. And Louisa can hop in here real quick, but I'm a commuter student. My situation has been pretty great for the most part. I actually commute right now. I don't, again, I don't live in the city right now. I live outside the city. So 
my first two years, I was always commuting into the city. It was not a problem at all. And in fact, when I didn't have a place to go like back home in terms of the weather being bad because of snow and whatnot, I could just drive right down the street to my cousin's house or an aunt's house or uncle's house because again, Philadelphia is my community. And that's, that was the ease of me being a commuter student. And there's also many opportunities they offer in terms of events and just general experiences. They want, they want commuter students to feel just as involved as non-commuter students. And I was asking Louisa, like, do you have any thoughts that you want to chime in about for non-commuter students? Yeah, so I actually dormed my first year at Temple University. I lived at the Edge, which is quite literally named the Edge because it is at the edge of campus, um, right next to Morgan. You'll see a huge building, huge sky, uh, skyscraper here at campus. It's very interesting to be because I live around about an hour and a half away from like where I grew up in Reading. And when you live on campus, you kind of get accustomed to dorm life. You um you, if you have a meal plan, if you do, if you do, it's kind of fun to like go and, you know, you just get out of your dorm, walk with your friends, you go to the campus cafeteria and you just eat food there. But as Tommy said that they really do work a lot to include um, commuter students as well. So besides like, like think living and eating, you are, everybody's included in all of the events around campus. So if you're, if you know, you have some friends or if you have family around and you're a commuter student, you're just as involved as any other student. And I think Tommy can definitely, you know, testify to that. Yeah, and then I'll just, I'll just add some more information about the student body. Student body is very diverse. My personal opinion, being around campus at all times of night, being in all different types of classrooms, it's, I would say it's very diverse and not only just diverse, but welcoming too. A, a campus can be diverse and not welcoming. In this case, that's not the case with Temple at all. In fact, everybody's welcoming. I've, I've been in situations where I would walk around campus at night because I had a night class and there'd be an event going on and I'd be like so lost, like what is this event happening here? Why did I just walk into something? And somebody would explain it to me if I asked like, hey, dude, what's going on here? Somebody would explain it to me because that's typically the case. I have questions and I, I need answers. Um, I should also mention how with the student body, there's a lot of international students and a lot of students coming from these different communities. That allows for the cultivation of ideas and thoughts and opinions. Me, I've had a missed experience of life. Luisa, same thing. Many different experiences. Our, one, our good friend Esteban, who comes from Mexico and currently plays soccer and also does temple sports stuff and everything under the sun as related to sports and everything he wants to do for media. He has different experiences. That's what, that's really what Temple's about. And that's what the student body's about. It comes in all forms. And some of your, some of the professors that people will meet, they're also students there too. They're taking courses just like the students. Again, Dr. Gratson, while he is taking classes right now at Oxford, he did recently graduate with his PhD in art, art history from the Tyler School of Art, which is on Temple University's campus, right next to Klein, actually. So again, this is just to give a little bit of overview about the student body. And then finally, I just want to quick note the importance of staff and faculty. Everybody is already welcoming as students. This goes for the staff and faculty. I feel as though in my classrooms, I've had great faculty in terms of being able to like just speak to them about coursework and even meet them in their office hours. And honestly, some of them, I'm not gonna say like are my friends, but are very close to me. And again, I, I'll say, for example, my one gen ed class I had my freshman year, I wouldn't have expected it to be anything serious because it was just a gen ed. But by the end of the course, I not only had a great grade, a great experience learning, but I also developed a great connection. And that's, that's really at the heart of the importance of staff and faculty, that those connections are key. Just generally across Temple, take advantage of those connections. You never know who you're gonna meet and you never know what that person's background is. You may, you may see them as just possibly an academic advisor, but if you actually look into them, they, everybody has experience in something and that's key to making connections and just enjoying your experience at Temple as a whole. So speaking about internships and fellowships, uh, to the left, uh, you see that we kind of have a lot of different logos. So I'm currently, and for the last two semesters, have been interning at Broken Philly. 
as an editorial intern and it is a unicorn of a workplace. I love it so much. I know Kaylee has been at our meetings, like at our huge uh, staff meetings, but we're about a team of like 15 or so. And it's really amazing because we're kind of split in two. So, you know, you have an investigative reporter, but you actually have something called a community engagement team. And they do a lot of work with community organizations. But this was actually my first internship. Um, and I was very uh, happy because it is a paid internship. And I think that's something that like once you start university, there's a lot of conversation around the unpaid internship and the paid internship as well. And it really, re it's reliant on your, um, whether you want, can actually take an unpaid internship and that's why there's a lot of conversation around it but i really love broken philly i love what i do there i vet news but i'm also they're allowing me to work with an investigative reporter on the side um next gen radio is an npr um like training thing for a week and for a week you work next to a mentor at whyy here in philadelphia and you create your own like you report your own story and i was actually able to report a story about a young uh an immigrant that came here when with her daughter from Peru when she was around like in her 20s and her 30s and you know her daughter's all grown up now but when she was in Peru she had a restaurant and when she came here she had to you know just work to provide for her family but she you know now that she you know her daughter moved out she wants to like start baking again and she's like this amazing baker so it's just stories like that that I was able to like cultivate through Next Gen Radio along with working with like some titans in the industry like Celeste Heatley. And I personally, due to my financial situation, will be very honest, I was never able to take an unpaid internship, but this fellowship lasted a week and it was unpaid, but it's something where I'm only working here for a week and I'm getting a lot of valuable experience and connections, but I'm not financially straining myself, which is something that I found very positive about that experience. And I did it the summer after my freshman year. So one big thing with internships and jobs is I always say, just apply. I know it can be very intimidating. And, you know, sometimes we can psych ourselves out and say like, oh, like I'll never get that, but you ever, you never know, right? Like, it's just about applying and putting that application in there. Um, you have here on Temple, you have your Temple Diamond Peer Teachers Program. You have Handshake and Client Connect. Client Connect is uh, client specific. You have a login when you're here in the university and they update it very periodically through the career office. And it's a great tool because through Client Connect, you can actually submit cover letters and resumes and other things for review. And they'll get back to you with comments and suggestions, which just strengthens your applications. Um, you have the Resnick Academic Support Center, Broken Philly, which I mentioned. And then, of course, Tommy will talk all about the office of the Philadelphia City Commissioner. So that's my uh, experience with internships and fellowships. And they can be very valuable. And I've learned a lot through my experience with them. Yeah, they definitely come in all different forms, as Luisa has mentioned. I mean, just those two alone that she has had and talked about not to say they're completely different, but they offer two different things. And she also took them at two different times where, you know, resume was different, coursework, whatever her background was, very different. So it is interesting. In my case, I've had, again, I've had the opportunity to get some research grants. One was the Creative Arts Research and Scholarship Grant through the, I believe it's through the Vice Provost Office. And if not, I believe it is just generally, I'll just say it's through Temple. And I also was able to be a diamond peer teacher for Temple. And I also had the experience of being an intern for the Office of the Philadelphia City Commissioners and for the US Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. These timelines vary for different things. I'll speak to, I would say probably the biggest one that has impacted me so far is definitely what I did with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. That was unpaid, but I was doing other stuff in the meantime to like support myself, like the diamond peer teachers thing. I did the US EEOC internship for about six months from the summer to the end of the fall. It was honestly one of the most rewarding experiences just because I am interested in law, not necessarily employment discrimination law, but that, that background really launched me forward, I would say. I had, I had the chance to work alongside other investigators, people like who are, who are also pursuing law degrees and also working at the commission. I got to learn about how you know employment discrimination works not only in the US, but as it relates to foreign workers coming in or US workers working for foreign companies. Overall, it just provided me a lot of experience. And I also got to speak with residents of Philadelphia and helping them with different cases of employment discrimination. There was 
there are so many opportunities available through Temple and also outside of Temple. I think an important one to really important one to note before we move on is what's offered through the Vice Provost website, which you can find all of these different fellowships and scholarships. Well, I, be, I believe, and Kaylee can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that one of our greatest achievements at Klein and at Temple is our most recent Rhodes Scholar, Hazim Hardeman, and our only one who actually comes from Philadelphia. And that process started at Temple. Like his application for that Rhodes Scholarship started at Temple. And again, that just shows you that any anybody can do it. Like you don't you don't have to come from a certain background or have to go to like an Ivy League school all the time. It's about you and the access to those opportunities and whatnot. That again, like it it's through Temple and it's also outside of Temple. You can take advantage of whatever experiences you need to that that you want to in turn to succeed or do whatever you want in the future. So about scholarships, um, they're a wide array and scholarship is kind of like a hunt, it is, um, because a uh, lengthy application process a shorter applications, it really depends on the scholarship that you're applying to. You know, you have Temple Academic Works and this is a website that I like during kind of like the middle of the semester, they'll alert you like, hey, some of our client scholarships are going to be open for applications and you have your own profile and it's they make it they streamline it. They make it so easy to apply to various scholarships. I really love like just every semester applying for them. The Dean of Student Scholarships, the Vice Provost Scholarships, you have Mark David LGBTQ plus scholarship and then you have the NBC universal slash L and E S C scholarship. I actually received this scholarship personally last year. It has helped me out tremendously. And I remember like during my application, a lot of what I talked about wasn't just my internship experience, but really it was rooted in what I've done at Temple and what I've done with student organizations. And that was one thing is that when you get involved with organizations or different shows and different productions, if you don't, let's say, have that internship experience, that is just as valuable. So that always helps out when you're applying to scholarships. And also, you know, being honest, they're going to want you to be personable when you're applying and things like that. It makes you stand out. So those are some of my really big tips for like the scholarship hunt. And it can be a little tiring. I'm not going to deny that. But like the benefit like outweighs you know anything and when you get that scholarship or when you're applying for that scholarship is really really helpful so yes and then you know we have different awards and conferences conferences are really interesting um during the COVID era because they are online um but I went to an investigative reporters conference and it was really interesting because you still got to network and attend panels and things like that but huge huge networking opportunities when you go to these I just, I just want to make everyone aware that this seems like a lot right now. We have a master sheet of all of these things that Kaylee will be able to send out afterwards. It's really cool because it's not just as it's listed there and you have to research it. You can click on the links that we provide it, and there's a lot more than what's listed there. Just to pretty much wrap up with what Louisa was saying, some of these things are offered through Temple. Some of these things are offered outside of Temple. Regardless, you'll have the resources to access them through Temple and through whatever offices through staff, through faculty, whatever web pages it may be, you can access them all through Temple. And oh, I just want a quick note that we have had presenters at the Eastern Communication Association Conference. Yeah, actually, we've had presenters at, I believe, all of these, all of these conferences and many more. I would say the only award that I'm not aware of any client students or any, in my case, comm students giving is the Temple Grit Beauty Competition, which I believe is related to art. Again, you can apply to any of these things. That's the greatness about Klein, that's the greatness about Temple. So we kind of briefly touched upon this, but professor-student relationships are so important, incredibly important. They can become mentors and give you insight into your field. They will provide personal recommendation letters and help you with all the applications. The especially the reason this one is very important is because when you're applying to things, it's always great to have you know a relationship with your professor where you can reach out and say, hey, can you write this letter of recommendation for me? And if you have this established relationship with them, it makes the letter all that much greater. And then of course, it's a lot of networking. The cool thing about when you go to college is that all of these professors are in their field, right? And they have so many connections and they will really just 
give you an insight personally that you might not find anywhere else. Like a lot of stories I've met, like um, professors like Karen Turner, who like award-winning did a lot of work in broadcast. So when you're getting tips from them, like they're it's very insightful, very valuable. Um, utilize office hours and stay in touch. I know Tommy and I both have like some professors that from some, from freshman year that we still talk to now heading into our senior year. And it's um, when I am applying to things, I have reached out to, I'm going to say to our advisor of our organization at least two to three times to provide me with a letter or, you know, just an email or some tips and tricks to an application. So very, very invaluable. Yeah, it's honestly, uh, I would say it's actually my favorite aspect about Temple as a whole. I I probably have had the best experiences just simply chatting with professors. And then afterward, when they are able to give you those letters of recommendation or simply able to just give you recommendations of opportunities to apply to. One for me recently, most recently actually, was one that Dr. Gradson sent on me and said, hey, apply to this. He does that a lot with me, and I very much appreciate that because it does work out in the end. I, 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 I pretty much, I got an opportunity. I, I, I have to thank him for that. I have to thank him for a lot of things. I have to thank a lot of my professors for a lot of things because they have done that for me. I should, I actually want to explain some of these photos real quick. So the top left one there is from my induction to Atlanta Paeta, my induction to Atlanta Paeta, which is the communication associate, National Communication Association's Student Organization for Honor Students. That is through communication studies. There's Dr. Gratson, me and them, and then the, our former president, when, and I should mention that I'm the, I'm the now president, our former president, Max Eagle, who actually became a teacher for America, which is an awesome program. And he's currently working at a school right now in New York. Then in this middle photo is Luisa and I, after presenting at a conference, with Tania and Sean. Tania is the director of the Office of Leadership Development at Temple. She's phenomenal. I worked with her my freshman year. She developed me as a leader and I, I'm ever grateful for her and everything she has done and she continues to do for not only us, but also for Temple as a whole. And then finally at the very bottom, that person to note with that great smile right there is Rafael, who was the former president of Latinx and is currently a professor I believe between either two or three colleges, I know that he teaches at Community College of Philadelphia as well as at Temple. He is great in everything he does. And he's also very intelligent. Like he's, he knows so much about everything, it's awesome. And I just wanna also note, if you do, if students do decide, decide to come to Temple, utilize his office hours and stay in touch. I know Louisa mentioned it, but I just wanna, emphasize it. A lot of students feel afraid about doing that. Reach out. My, for my first class, I emailed Dr. Gradson and said, hey, is there anything I need to bring for the first day of class? That's, that's the type of time you should be on when you come into college. I think you just have to be open and be, be honest with yourself and just, just go out there and express, express yourself with everything you do. Communicate, be in touch, visit those office hours, try to Take the knowledge from those professors, take as much as possible, because that's what college is about. So some post-grad aspirations, I know, well, we graduate in a year, right? So it's aspirations. I don't think we have concrete answers yet. If you do, amazing. But um, post-grad aspirations, I think I've kind of zeroed in on this one fellowship that I really want um, to work with Code Switch, which is a podcast for NPR. But the possibilities are so open. And I think, you know, as I'm preparing to graduate, it's just really looking at the market or like the job field right now and being honest that I actually really like communications, not to, you know, get on Tommy's major, but I, it's so much fun. It's very broad and I really enjoy political communication specifically. So even though I do study journalism, there's a lot of options out there career-wise. So once again, we've repeated this like so many times, but I'm not limited in what I want to do when I post-grad. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's the biggest take, I'm not gonna say it's the biggest takeaway from this, con this conversation, but it's definitely a major one. We're, we're really able to do anything. I mean, if Luisa and I wanted to, we could open up an ad agency and that may not, if you look at our resume track record, it may not reflect that, but we could because of everything we have learned through our experiences inside and outside of Temple University. 
for myself. I mentioned it before, but I am very much interested in law school. International law is of high interest to me as it relates to security. I thought about working for, I, I thought about institutions like the UN, but again, I'm really just keeping it broad at this point. I know I'm interested in international law, security, maritime law, all that stuff. I just have to make it, I just have to make it apply come time. And that's really what, that's really what I'm focusing on. Again, law school and move from there. I'm not trying to really zone in or narrow in any like specific job because there are so many opportunities. I learned that through my own experience. I was focused on specific internships before, but by broadening my horizons, I feel like a much better person actually. Just, just wholeheartedly feeling great, being able to work with different communities, help people and then also bring people's stories to life, especially through my research. When you get to quote somebody and mention it in something or take a photo, simple things like that, very effective and it feels great. And yeah, I mean, again, I just, I, I think a big thing to take away is that you can do anything by coming to Klein, by coming to Temple. It's all, it's all about just what you make of it. You just have to push yourself, get those experiences, and then even if you don't, like, for example, if you're struggling with a class or if, again, if a, if a pandemic like this happens and you feel like you're in the hole, you don't have to worry about that. And I believe this actually leads into our final slide about self-care, which, Lisa, you want to start us off with that? Yes, I'm a huge advocate of self-care. It is uh, something that I kind of had to learn freshman year. Um, I think one of the things when you get to college is you kind of want to do everything, a little bit of everything, which I really, really advocate for experimenting and stuff like that. But I know it's our last point, but learning how to say no to certain things is very important because you don't want to stretch yourself too thin where you become overwhelmed because it is very easy to become overwhelmed. College, you know, you're making your own schedule. You're getting this independence for the first time and mix that in with your classes and, you know, a heavy course load. It can become a little bit overwhelming. And there's nothing wrong with like taking a look and taking a breath and, you know, saying, hey, maybe I want to take a break for a little bit and just breathe and give some time to myself. You build a routine that's very important. I'm not saying, you know, like you have to, be on clockwork every day, but it's nice to, um, you know, I have class at this time, so I'm going to, you know, maybe have a break lunchtime this time and do my internship at this time. Building healthy relationships and friendships. I cannot emphasize how important it is for me, like, to be around my friends, and I'm love, very lucky to live with, like, three of them in my apartment, but I am around them, and whenever I'm stressed, I have somebody to go talk to, and you can do the same things with, you know, if you build those relationships with professors, if you're ever stressed in a class, please do not hesitate to email your professor and, hey, I'm kind of struggling with this a little bit. And they will be receptive because we're in the middle of a global pandemic. So they kind of understand what's going on as well. Like even without that situation, they're very understanding a majority of the time. And having hobbies and other activities that aren't related to your field is very important. And the reason I say this is because we can be zeroed in into exactly what we want to do. But if you like knitting, if you like a sport, if you like running, working out, like don't knock that as well, because those are just as important to get your mind off of things. Like I know Tommy has martial arts, which is really cool. And I know I'm like, I just like hang out with my friends, but I like cooking personally. I find a lot of like free time in that and like having a really good meal and watching TV are like my ideal afternoon because I'm a grandma, but that's just me. And yeah, find out find creative ways to express like yourself and just have fun and rest sleep as much as you can I'm not saying you're gonna have a perfect sleeping schedule because I'm realistic but just sleep as much as you can and just take care of yourself as best as you can because that really for me is the key to getting through college yeah I, I, Lucy said it best I don't want to add too much to it but one final point is don't let anyone tell you who you are. And by that, I mean, don't, don't let somebody say that you're not good enough or you're not worthy of this opportunity, especially during a situation like this global pandemic or anything in life. You know who you are. And if you, you may, not, may not feel like it sometimes, trust me, you do. You, you may need to just take that time and figure it out. You know who you are, be confident in yourself, and don't let anyone tell you any different. So many times, I'm sure Louisa experienced, I'm sure Kaylee's experienced it. I know I have. 
a lot of people trying to count you out or disregard you and all that stuff. Don't don't let don't let your mind do that to yourself. Our worst enemy can be our mind, and this is why it's important to keep in mind self care and all of this. You are great. You will do great things. Just push yourself, and I promise you, it will pay off. It will always pay off. And I believe that is it. Yeah. Thank you for everything, everyone. Here's our these are our emails, our Instagrams, then also the Instagram for the. Latinx Media Association, and of course, Kaylee, you, you could always reach out to Kaylee, of course, we don't have her information listed, but I know you have that because you wouldn't be here if you didn't have it, so, yeah. Awesome. Thank you both so much. Round of applause, all of the things. Um, we will stick on. If anyone has any questions, I will stop recording so you can feel free to.